بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادئ له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم There is a whole surah in the Quran which has been named after a woman and the, soul, and the whole surah is regarding this woman and that is Surah Maryam. And there's no other surah in the Quran which is named after a, wom a woman apart from Surah to Maryam. And of course, Maryam, may Allah be pleased with her, she was the mother of Isa alayhi salam. And this is for us to clarify to the people that we love Isa alayhi salam and we love the mother of Isa, Maryam, may Allah be pleased with her. Before we recite the Quran, we seek refuge and protection in Allah from a shaitan al rajim meaning that we seek refuge in Allah from a shaitan so that we are able to recite and contemplate the Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaitan al rajim Bismillahi rahman al rahim Meaning that in the name of Allah, I begin my recitation, and in the name of Allah, I recite. <laughs> and these individual letters are letters that the people use in their speech. People used to speak with these letters. However, despite us knowing these letters, Nobody was able to produce a single ayah like the ayah of the Qur'an. ذِكْرُ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّكَ عَبْدَهُ زَكَرِيَّا Meaning that this, it contains a remembrance or a mention of the truthful Prophet of Allah, Zakariya alayhi salam. And we will mention to you some, or we will mention to you regarding Prophet Zakariya alayhi salam and he worshipped Allah so Allah elevated Prophet Zakariya alayhi salam what did he do? إذ نادى ربه نداء خفيا meaning he called out to Allah and he invoked him but he invoked him with a quiet voice did not, he did not raise this voice rather with the correct etiquette he called out to his voice he called out to Allah and with what did he supplicate or for what did he supplicate? And he sought and he supplicated to Allah through a wasila, an intercession, and that is that he sought intercession from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the just as you have answered my dua previously and you did not reject my supplication then answer my dua now but I don't have the strength which I had when I was young and now the effects of me becoming older are showing and so before he made his dua he mentioned matters which will bring the answer of the supplication وَإِنِّي خِفْتُ الْمَوَالِيَ مِنْ وَرَائِي وَكَانَتِ امْرَأَتِي عَاقِرًا فَهَبْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ وَلِيَّا He sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a child. But what was the reason? And he supplicated to Allah for a child so that this child could maintain Bayt al-Maqdis, Jerusalem. And that this child could serve the religion. Meaning he did not want a child from Allah for his own self, rather in order to serve the religion of Islam or the religion. And the prophets and the messengers, they do not inherit from each other. But the prophet Zakaria alayhi salam, he wanted Allah subhanahu to bestow upon him a child who would inherit from him prophethood. And then he said, Oh my Lord, make him somebody who you are pleased with. Because if Allah subhanahu is pleased with a person, then everybody is pleased with that person. Ya Zakariya, inna 
نبشرك بغلام اسمه يحيى لم نجعل له من قبل سميا. And Allah subhanahu he answered the supplication of his prophet Zakaria alayhi salam and he bestowed upon him a child because Zakaria alayhi salam he supplicated to Allah with sincerity and Allah subhanahu made this child have certain distinguishing traits firstly that his name would be Yahya and that nobody previous to him was ever called Yahya and this is one view and that there was no other prophet or messenger who was better than Yahya alayhi salam except the one whom Allah gave a grade of excellency over Yahya alayhi salam like Isa alayhi salam but Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam when he supplicated and the glad tidings of a child came to him he never thought and he never remembered that his wife is infertile that she's not able to bear children no. Only after he was given the glad tiding of a child, then he remembered that how will a child be given to us and bestowed upon us and my wife is infertile and she cannot produce children and I am also of an older age. And how is it possible that a child will be bestowed upon them and she cannot give birth to a child and he is old in age because it is the decree of Allah which is never refused. Meaning that this is something which is easy upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And before mentioning the story of Isa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the story of Zakariya and Yahya alayhi salam. Why? To teach the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has complete ability over everything. And he, Prophet Zakariya alayhi salam, he requested from Allah that he gives him a sign to show that a baby is being carried by his wife. And what is that sign or indicator? And what was the sign and the indicator that Allah subhanahu wa told him that despite your health, and that you are well and you are able to speak. However, for three nights you will not be able to speak. And this was the sign that you are able to speak and you are healthy and well, but for three nights you will not be able to speak. And this shows the qudra or the ability of Allah subhanahu. And he is able to speak. However, he will be unable to speak. And sometimes you have the husband and wife and both of them are well and healthy and no child is bestowed upon them. And sometimes in this situation, you have a woman who is infertile and a man who is old and yet Allah subhanahu bestows a child upon them. And this is the sign. And the mentioning of the mihrab here is not the ihrab which we see in the masjid. Rather the meaning of mihrab is a room within a person's house in which a person can be devoted to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the musalla of a house where you have a small area of the house in which a person devotes himself to the worship of Allah. And Allah subhanahu he ordered them to glorify him and to free him of deficiencies and to praise him upon these blessings, these, these continuous blessings, one after the other, that there would be a prophet after a prophet. And Allah subhanahu he ordered Prophet Yahya alayhi salam with certain matters. Ya Yahya khudhi al-kitab bi wa atainahu al-hukm sabiyya. And Allah subhanahu he blessed Yahya alayhi salam and he blessed his father and he blessed his people 
such that revelation would be received by Yahya alayhi salam and this is before he reached 40 years of age. And Allah subhanahu he ordered Yahya alayhi salam to take and receive the book with diligence and with strength so he can play the role that his father Zakaria alayhi salam fulfilled. وَحَنَانًا مِّن لَّدُنَّا وَزَكَاةً وَكَانَ تَقِيًّا And this is a praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Prophet Yahya alayhi salam and a mention of his mercy upon him and also how Allah has chosen the prophets and made them better like Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu he made Yahya alayhi salam obedient to his parents and that he would not be arrogant and haughty over the rest of creation. Why? Because Yahya alayhi salam he is going to serve the people and he is going to call and teach the people and try to guide the people. وَسَلَامٌ عَلَيْهِ يَوْمَ وُلِدَ وَيَوْمَ يَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ يُبْعَثُ حَيَّا And Allah subhanahu he protected him from ever falling into sins and disobedience and actions of shirk regardless of whether it was during his lifetime or before his death. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَرْيَمَ إِذٍ تَبَدَتْ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا مَكَانًا شَرْقِيًّا Meaning, mention, O my Prophet, may peace be upon you, the story and the account of this righteous, pious woman, Maryam alayhi salam, who will be the mother of a great Prophet, and not only a great Prophet, but a Prophet from Ulul Azm from the greatest prophets who showed patience and determination. And what did she do? She cut off from the people to devote herself to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa sent Jibreel alayhi salam in the form of a man, in the form of the most handsome of men. And there were certain causes or situations which would normally cause, call to or cause indecency. That he was, a, he was a handsome man and he was in his youth and she was also beautiful and they were in a place where nobody, nobody else could see them. But what did she do? She gave precedence to her fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over her desires. And so Allah subhanahu wa rewarded her with something better than that which she abandoned. And she never thought, not even for a day, that she would ever be a, pr a mother of a prophet. So what did she say? قالت إني أعوذ بالرحمن منك إن كنت تقيا. And when she saw this angel, but in the form of a in the form of a handsome man, what did she do? She feared Allah, and she reminded him that if you are a pious person, then stay away from me. And here it became clear and the consequence of seeking the pleasure of Allah over that which a person desires. Here it became clear and that is that the angel Jibreel in the form of the beautiful man, he said rather I am a messenger who has been sent by Allah to give you the glad tidings of a child and that this child will have certain, certain features and he will be a child who is pure, without sins, somebody whom Allah will save. And just as Prophet Zakaria alayhi salam reacted, then similarly Maryam alayhi salam she also reacted, meaning how can I bear a child and I do not have a husband? 
قالت أنا يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم أك بغيا. And there are two ways of a woman bearing a child. Either she has a husband or she does the actions of immorality. And she negated both. She said, Neither do I have a, a husband such I, that I can bear a child. And neither am I a woman who is immoral because Allah saved her from this. And Allah subhanahu decreed that Isa alayhi salam would be born to a mother Without a father, yani she does not have a husband. And just as Allah subhanahu had created Adam alayhi salam without a mother and a father, then even easier for Allah to create Isa alayhi salam without a father. And Allah subhanahu, in the context of mentioning Isa alayhi salam who was born to a mother without a father, he mentioned Adam alayhi salam. That verily the example of Isa alayhi salam is like the example of Adam alayhi salam. فَحَمَلَتْهُ فَانْتَبَدَتْ بِهِ مَكَانًا قَصِيًّا And she became pregnant and this was something that Allah subhana decreed. And then she distanced herself and she she distanced herself and she concealed herself from the people. As the signs of pregnancy were becoming apparent upon her, she distanced herself so people could not see her. And so she was going through labor and the pains of birth. And there was a date palm close to her. And then she began to think that perhaps it was better that she never bore a child. Why? Because people are now going to speak about him and accuse her of certain matters. But what she did not know, that all goodness would be in this. فَنَادَاهَا مِن تَحْتِهَا أَلَّا تَحْزَنِي قَدَ جَعَلَ رَبُّكِ تَحْتَكِ سَرِيَّا and she heard a voice, and it was the voice of an angel. And the angel called out to her from below her, Do not be scared, do not become fearful. Meaning, do not fear the future, and neither worry about the past. So she's in, or she's experiencing the pains of birth, and she does not have anybody to help her, and she, she possesses no food or drink, and yet Allah provided for her with drink and food, and, and then greater than all of these blessings that Allah bestowed her with this upon, Allah bestowed upon her this child who would be from the greatest of prophets and messengers. And Allah subhana he ordered her to shake the date palm. And when she shook the date palm, Fresh dates descended from the date palm so she was able to eat and drink. And this ayah contains the evidence for fulfilling those causes which Allah subhanahu has placed upon the earth. And Allah subhanahu, He ordered her to be happy and not to cry and, and to stop the tears of her eye because Allah subhanahu has bestowed upon her this child. And Allah subhanahu, He told her and He directed her that if a person comes to you to speak to you, don't speak. Meaning, don't defend yourself because Allah subhanahu has taken it upon Himself to defend her. And Allah subhanahu, He placed many evidences and signs and indicators 
to prove the innocence and the truthfulness of Maryam. May Allah be pleased with her. فأتت به قومها تحمله. A short a while a short while ago, she was fearful and scared, and she did not want to exist, and she was desiring death, and now she approached her own people carrying her child, meaning Maryam alayhi salam. She came to the people carrying her baby Isa alayhi salam, and this is one of the clearest proofs that she had done nothing wrong. Because had she done something wrong, she would not have approached the people in this manner, rather she would have concealed it. But the people, they spoke evil of her. But then they themselves bore witness to her innocence. And they said, يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرأ سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا. And Subhanallah, they themselves, they bore witness to her innocence. They said that your father and your mother and your family are not known for indecency and immorality, and therefore even more you are not known for this. And the Harun which is mentioned in this ayah is not Harun, the brother of Musa alayhi salam. But they used to address each other, linking back to prophets and messengers. And this is another evidence, after the previous evidences, that she is innocent. That she pointed to the baby and said, ask him. And up until now, Isa alayhi salam has not spoken because Allah subhanahu wanted for those people to say that a child does not speak and therefore if this child does speak then this is an evidence for the innocence of Maryam alayhi salam. So they denied this that how is it possible for a child to speak and then the child spoke. And what did the child say? What, the first word which Isa alayhi salam spoke with, what was it? He said that he is a worshipper of Allah such that he should not be worshipped. Except that he is distinguished from the rest of creation because Allah subhanahu he revealed to him the book and he made him a messenger. And he is a worshipper of Allah and he has been ordered. He was a person whom Allah ordered to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he was commanded to worship Allah and Allah subhanahu made him a person of who contained barakah. And from the blessings which, which Allah subhanahu wa gave Isa alayhi salam is that towards the end of times he will descend once more. And when he descends and comes upon this earth he will kill the pigs and he will break the crucifix and he will only be pleased with Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa made him obedient towards his mother who is a pious woman. And when Allah subhanahu mentions the other prophets and messengers, He never mentions them with their lineage, except Isa alayhi salam. He always says, Isa, the son of Maryam, may Allah be pleased with Maryam alayhi salam. And this is to remind us that Isa alayhi salam was created with this miraculous birth of being born to a mother without a father. وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّا And Allah subhana, He protected Isa alayhi salam from illnesses and from sins and disobedience and from bid'ah and from shirkiyat, actions of shirk. ذَلِكَ عِيسَ بَنُ مَرْيَمْ قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي فِيهِ يَمْتَرُونَ and this is the truth regarding Prophet Isa alayhi salam. And so we have to mention this reality regarding Isa alayhi salam. That we have to love him and we bear witness that he was a prophet and a messenger. 
and that we have to defend the honor of Isa alayhi salam and his mother, may Allah be pleased with her. And by Allah, we can never believe that he was crucified or killed. Rather, Allah, he raised him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also believe that Isa alayhi salam, he will descend during the end of times. والله أعلم صلى الله على نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم وجزاكم الله خيرا